Good afternoon, May 14th, 2024. My name is David Knox, and I feel a lot better. I can finally speak. It's been eight days, maybe nine, since I had a lot of stimulus at an event we went to. It caused a lot of issues with me, not only talking, walking, moving, thinking. Horrible. Today I feel so much better. <laughs> As I talked about my other videos, you, you get these good days every once in a while. Sometimes you might even get two in a row. Today's short video is about how instrumental MRIs are with MSA. MRIs are probably the first test diagnostically besides clinical, you know, the tapping tests and this and that. Besides clinical, the first uh, diagnostic test that will be done to start to narrow down if it's MSA or more common, something else. So... DAS scans are great, PET scans are great, uh, synuclein protein t biopsies are great, staining. Uh, there's so many tests that are, that are there, but, but MRIs are very cheap and they're readily available. You don't have to travel very far to get an MRI, but if you want to get a DAS scan, most of us have to travel much farther, sometimes half a day or a full day, depending on what country we're in. So I have a quick presentation. The data I am pulling, the information, is taken strictly off of the movementdisorder.com website which is known as the International Parkinson's and Movement Disorder Society. The, probably the greatest resource you can have that envelops everything on every other web page. It's a great resource. It just takes a little bit of reading because it's a lot of scholastic articles, a lot of research and uh, medical files. So great, great, great information. And it's also easily accessible on your cell phone. So I made a eight page PowerPoint for you. Very brief and to the point of why MSA is not Parkinson's and Parkinson's is not MSA. And we can we know this with something as simple as an MRI. I just saw this this morning. I said, wow, this is great information. Just, just knowing that there are chances MRI is going to catch MSA. The question is, how long does it take? And we will get to that. One of the last slides says that. So I'm going to bring up a share. And I'm going to switch. There we go. And here we go. This is exactly from the Movement Disorder website. And apparently I have captions on my PowerPoint, so just, just bear with me. So we see most, most seven pictures we're going to show you here. Seven slides. Very, very, very simple. So panel one, or we're going to say picture one, uh, is showing images of the uh Infratentorial atrophy, including pontine atrophy, which is the solid lines, the solid lines to the left. So, left picture is MSA, right picture is Parkinson's. Compare and contrast where the arrows are at. There is atrophy, it's a solid arrow, right, uh, and the enlarged fissures in interfolial spaces. You, with the dash, when you start to see the little lines, kind of like a river, like the Nile River and the Amazon, stuff like that, Mississippi River. Um, of the cerebellum and a consecutive dilated fourth ventricle, which is the dotted arrow, the one in the middle towards the bottom. So if you compare these pictures from left to right, we're looking for shrinkage, right? The right picture is bright white, full of mass. There's a lot of mass in there. You look at the left picture, it's all shrinking. It's wasting away. Okay, and these, 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 these telltale signs of MSA become much more pr uh, pronounced and much easier to see on MRI the longer you have it, unfortunately. So again, A and B are not the same. A is MSA, B is Parkinson's. Next picture. Picture two, images of the middle cere cere cerebellar pinnacles, if I can say that right, MCP, also looking back at the cerebellum. Right, the serospinal fluid spaces of pontal cerebellar cisterns. The solid arrow in a patient with MSA and no MCP and atrophy in a patient with Parkinson's on picture B. Again, look at picture A. It's like the river, the lake is receding, <laughs> low water table, right? You start to see all the fissures. B, Parkinson's, is still very full. It's a lot of mass. You don't see any shrinkage. You know, other than you see detail, but you don't see shrinkage. So again, looking at the cerebellar part of the brain, the back, you, we can see these things with MRIs. And, and even the Puderman and Caldate. Now, picture number three needs no introduction. It is the hot cross 
uh, hot cross bun sign. If you have the a if you have a representation of a hot cross sign on your solar bell or your brain, you have MSA. The hot cross sign is the hallmark of MSA. No other disease has a hot cross bun sign on it except for MSA. And I just want to say to, to have that type of uh, uh, sign, you're generally you're very far progressed into MSA according to all the documentation that, they, that, they, that you read everywhere. Picture four, Pudiman, that's me, right? Pudiman and Caldi. Pudiman attributes solid arrows. I had many videos of this before on my YouTube channel. Solid arrows on picture A and B. You start to see these things. So A and B include hyper intense rim dash, uh, hyper intense rim. So what you're looking at is the changes in color. It should be solid. So if you look at picture C with, with Parkinson's, there's no changes of colors. It's solid. There's, there's a clear delineation, clear line of, of black and white, you know, one color or the other color. The other A and B, they start to blend into each other. So they, they call it the hyper intense. Uh, picture A is the, the Pudiman hyper intensity compared to the globus pallidus and the dotted lines for A and B. So you can see, especially in picture B, you see the shrinkage of it compared to even more to A. And C, you, don't, you just don't see the shrinkage or, or the atrophy. One of these things is not the same, and that's Parkinson's. Picture five, atrophy of the MCP. I'm not going to say that word again. It's, it's just part of the soap, middle part of the soap over. It's like a little tower looking thing. Um, hyper intensity in the dashed arrows, dashed long lines. So the bottom ones in picture A. You, you, see, you see the color change. It looks like there's some white mass surrounded by dark gray. And you see my arrows, it's going to be right here. Um, and hot boss crest sign seen in patients on picture B, you see it starting. It's, you can see it, it's there. Um, of course, seeing the real image, you, it'll jump out at you, but on picture B, the hot, hot cross button sign is right here. It's perfectly intact. I mean, it's clearly visible. And if you look at patient C over here with some of the Parkinson's, they do not have ever a hot, hot cross button sign. C, uh, picture six is where we start to get a little more interesting. I told you, timing is everything. Uh, picture six, I should have changed this over here, but whatever. Uh, pitch, picture six shows the diffuse hyperintensity, what we talked about before, the, the color changes, just, just not a clean delineation or one solid color. It's a bunch of colors, you know, showing the, the hyper uh, increased diffusivity values. It says in the posterior part of both the Pudiman and patients with MSA compared to a Parkinson's patient with no diffusivity changes in the Pudiman C. So you see A and B, the hyperintensity changes at the Pudiman level. Now, please read the next thing here. It says the changes in the, in, this is one, in, 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 this is one, <laughs> uh, darn you, MSA. This is one patient for, on patient A that had MSA and the hyperintensity of the Pudiman was observed in only six months after the onset of levodopa responsive Parkinson, Parkinsonism. He or she responded favorably to levodopa carbidopa. It helped them. But in six months' time, you got that atrophy. However, it says the anticipated, and to, to see this criterion A, to see this type of atrophy, this, this diffusity, normally takes 18 to 24, 18 months for, for clinical diagnosis of a possible MSA, and 24 months or two years for diagnosis of probable Right, diagnosing MSA means you're dead. You have hot, hot cross bun sign, right? post mortem. Best we get is possible, uh, probable, and possible. Possible and probable. Possible is you meet quite a few of them. The, term, the diagnostic criteria, and probable is you meet all of it. We just don't know technically until, unfortunately, we, we, we pass away and they do an autopsy of the brain. Normal imaging takes 18 to 24 months. What? one and three quarter years, up to two years to see this type of atrophy in the brain. The only MRIs I had was within one year of the onset of symptoms. And that's why, as my kids get home, and that's why my doctor in medical clinic said it's possible we're not seeing atrophy because you're too, you're too soon into it. It was only one year. So you have to understand, you just start symptoms like me, like I did, 2021, and you get a couple of MRIs, you know, within six months to a year, 
that doesn't mean you're going to be able to see action. It takes time for things to happen, right? It takes time for my body, my muscles and stuff to ache, to waste away where I'm not using them for the disease to, to, to start to destroy them. It takes time. Somebody diagnosed with disease doesn't die that day, generally. It, it takes time to run its course. So MRIs are a great, 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 great tool to rule out a lot of things and also to confirm things, right? My friend Daisy had an MRI and it showed atrophy. She's four, over four years into MSA. Well, that's more than two years, right? I'm now three years into it. So one of my next stops and my, my next neurologist is I want to repeat my, my MRIs. I, want to, I will repeat them whether she wants to or not. We're going to have these done. Now, atrophy takes, it depends how, how fast we progress, okay? For those that have more autonomic changes, things like that, we'll start to see these, this atrophy much quicker. And, you know, maybe you might be able to see it, might be able to see it sooner. Last one we have, I believe, um, atrophy can, be, can also be determined with iron sensitive sequences as demonstrated in these images, pudimental and uh, put, atrophy and pudimental hypointensity on susceptibility weighted imaging in a patient with MSA compared to PD with no pudimental atrophy. Uh, Hypertensity starts typically in the dorsal part of the pudimental. So, you know, they're looking for, when I say iron sensitive sequences, they're talking about um, imaging that's looking for iron deposits right um or the shrinkage as i had in one of my original videos the atrophy of the pudiment is one of the first things to see uh caldate's next for activity but looking at your brain for msa is really the pudiment and only the pudiment right unless you have msa c then it's the cerebellar you see these switch from the first slides with cerebellar and now we're talking about pudiment most of MSA in the Western Hemisphere, the Western world, North America, South America, is MSA P, Parkinsonism. And the Eastern part, and I know Europe is still <laughs> the Western Hemisphere, to most of it, right? Te technically, uh, I think that's a good part of it. My geography is good, right? Um, but Europe and Africa falls into more of the, with Asia, right? The, the Eastern Hemisphere, where it's mostly MSA C. So, you know, MSAC, they start looking back here at MSAC for cerebellar, and MSAP, Parkinsonism, you have to change the P to a pudiment because that's where it starts to happen. So, you know, these things are MSAP and MSAC are not the same as Parkinson's. The problem is you have to be so far along, far enough along, far enough, far along enough that the changes in your body have been significant and they can see the atrophy without a doubt. Right, even my male clinic doctor said from the first MRIs I had a year into, he said he said he thought he saw something and it was inconclusive. Therefore, he just ruled it out. But he he believes there was actually atrophy, but he just couldn't prove it with the imaging. So, short video for you to the point: MRIs are vital. They're cheap. The problem is they're very they're the first test to be issued to you for the most part. The first test outside of clinical tests. And therefore, if you're early in your symptoms, you're not going to see atrophy at this level unless you're very rapid progressing, which a lot of us are not. So take that with a grain of salt. Don't rely on MRI to, to prove your atrophy, but undoubtedly down the road, at least two years in, two to three years in, it definitely should uh, reinforce that, yes, you do have MSA or maybe, or maybe not. Maybe you do have Parkinson's because you would not have any type of atrophy. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a like, subscribe, share it, comment. Uh, sharing is, is always great for me. I enjoy people asking me questions and sending videos to people that need it, whether it's information or it's uh, relaxation to watch my videos. <laughs> so I love you guys to death, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.